Hello everyone, we're going to try something a little bit different today. We're going to do an offline review because we do everything oh. live. Live, live, live. The live, live, live of Penguin episode two. Ooh. Man, that, this show is probably the most surprising thing I've seen on TV. It's so good, guys. It is I don't so know. Good. F- five, I want to say five years, but probably a lot longer than that. This has really blown me away with how well this is made. It's, it's The acting's phenomenal. The casting's perfect. Yeah. There's some really, there's some really surprising... Uh, actors that have popped up in the show as well, which I think is which is great. I, I, I can't. This is probably the first show in a while where where I've not felt anybody's been miscast. No, yeah, I feel exactly the same. Like yeah. I love DC, as you know, and just seeing just not just a really well thought out cast, a great plot, everything's ten out of ten across the board. Like you were saying, not only is the sets amazing, the makeup's incredible. It's just. It's wonderful to see DC be at peak again. It it just seems like it's coming back, and this is a great way of doing it. Yeah, it's it's and again, there's a lot of a lot of stars in this where you think like, I can't, I would never be able to see them be a crime boss, but they just put like Clancy Brown, which you see on the screen right now. Yes, he's perfect, man. Oh, can we just say just Clancy Brown is one of the best? I just love him. And the fact he's the voice of Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob, but more importantly. <laughs> More importantly, the really pissed off uh, drill sergeant from Starship Troopers. Some people not, might not remember that, though. I wonder if the chat If does. they don't, you need to watch Starship Troopers. Yeah. So this this entire episode is another, well, based the penguin scheming. He's, uh, he's trying to take over the criminal underworld of Gotham. And he feels the best way of doing that is pitting both the families together, so the Malcones and the, and the Falcones together, so they take each other out. And he reckons the best way of doing that is to for the rival family to steal drugs so they can then sell, steal the drugs that the Falcones are trying to sell, which will then put them out of business, or in turn make them uh, retaliate in a very violent way. So far, I'd say the Falcones are really dragging their heels. Ooh. Mostly down to really piss poor management, and That's none of them true. really, I don't know, none of them really seem to have a killer instinct, do they? No, it, it seems like, I don't know if they're holding back on purpose at this point, but yeah. it does seem like they haven't got their step ahead of the others. I feel like they're slowly just trucking behind, but we, it could change. But I, I am with you on that one as well. I feel like they're just one step out of place, or maybe they're pl- they're calling their bluff somewhere. We, with the beauty of this show mm. is that you're not quite sure. The Penguin is so uneasy. You don't know if he's going to be nice one second or if he's going to be malicious the next. Colin Farrell's done a very good oh. job of playing a very unbalanced character. He's he's off the he's completely off the rails. Sometimes he's your best friend, and then other times he's just going to shoot you in the back of the head. Like yeah. you don't know what he's going to do next. And because because he's so unhinged, it makes him really interesting as a character. And you kind of. I hate to say it, you kind of fall in love with him, mostly because yes. you see him very much as the underdog, but then you see him switch, and then he becomes the cold-hearted psychopath, potential mafia boss of the future. Yes. You just see, you see him switch it up, switch it down. Yes. And I think that's just such a big deal in the show that gives you that, you don't know what the fuck he's going to do next. You don't know where he's going to come from. You're you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And he's scheming all the time. You think that yourself, oh, he, he barely got out of that alive. Are you sure he's going to do that again? Yeah. There's an instance in the, three or four instances in the episode where he dies. You know, he could have died within an instant. Somebody could have found him out. Yep. Uh, the, the drop that we were talking about uh, about a couple of minutes ago, that goes completely awry. So his plan completely goes out the window due to somebody else getting involved and screwing it up. And he could have died. But he gets out of it. He somehow survives, which is the penguin. It should be called like the cat of nine lives because this guy just, he literally just pulls everything out of his ass all the time. I think his intellect gets him out of a lot of dodgy situations. I think the beauty of Penguin, he's definitely one step ahead of everybody. And I think that's probably why he's so lucky at the, at the moment. He, not to say he's not going to be, but he always finds a way, like you say, to get out of some dodgy uh, dealings and situations. But, uh, oh my word, he does put me on edge because you're never quite sure. He's he's really nice one second and then on the switch of a hat, he's like murdering somebody. So it's like, you just don't know. You just don't know. I love this depiction of the Penguin, though. Out of all of the villains we've seen in DC, obviously Joker's had the most depictions and he's had all different variations, but it's wonderfully refreshing to see Penguin in not such a camp light. He's very, he's terrifying. He is a villain at his core and you can tell that from off the bat. 
Oswald Copperpot doesn't really it doesn't really work in this world. I don't think that the kind of the surname kind of works, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think the last time I, s I saw a show of this quality is probably Sopranos, and I'm putting it out earlier. I think this is brilliant. This it, it, I kind of forget that this is a Batman based show. I, I can because it's it's so well written. The cast is brilliant. It's not all leaning on Colin Farrell as well. No, they was, all have their part to play. Yeah, I was kind of expecting it all to be very Colin Farrell heavy and him completely carrying the show. I'm not a big Colin Farrell fan, but man, as 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 Oz, he just completely nails it. And it's the makeup. The make we said this before. The makeup is just completely so transform transformative. Yeah, you so can't tell it if if somebody didn't tell you it was is it was Colin Farrell, you'd never know in a million years. I would have never guessed. You told me it was yeah. Colin Farrell, and I couldn't quite believe it. It you. just it just blew me away. And I think um, I think if if you give the show a chance, I think it'll blow you away as well. As, as we said before in episode one of the weekly show, this hundred percent gets a stamp of approval. Stamp right there. Because it's just it it keeps you wanting, it keeps you guessing. You really feel for for us as well because you know he's got, he's got he's got a gimpy leg, he's worn with a limp. He's got some vulnerabilities yeah, there, and not, you he's feel he's not a good looking guy. He's got he loves his mum, which I think is very endearing. You can that see he's whole got story like, as yeah. well. We'll get into, but oh. his mum's got dementia and she's also a raging narcissist, which is insane, right? <laughs> so <laughs> he's like some really weird relationship he's got with his mum but you can see that he really loves his mum and he and it's and it that really comes across which makes him endearing and then the next scene he's brutally murdering somebody yeah. with a knife so i think it's all about family yeah it's all about the family it's all about family it's all about the family <laughs> but uh yeah again he's at the moment he's playing both sides this this episode is called the inside man so he's got to try and stop himself from being caught as the inside man because if he gets found out obviously He's gonna, you know, he's gonna meet the fishes. <laughs> he's gonna get the concrete boots. He's gonna go out there and he's gonna, he's gonna get, he's gonna get whacked. <laughs> he's gonna have some guy come up behind, do do. <laughs> guy straining the, straining the water with the fishes. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. Colin Farrell's obviously, obviously playing Oz Cobb again. I can't understand why they said he's award-winning nominated film, The Lobster. But there we go. The Lobster was okay. Well, and says his best work. Uh, Sophia Falcone, she was in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. I've seen her in something else as well. I can't. How I Met Your is. Mother. She is the mother. She's the one with the umbrella. Uh, that's, that's where, where most from. people will probably see her from. I love. Can I just c quickly say on uh, Kristen because I love her as an actress. I think in this role she is showing all of her chops to the best like ability she has, and seeing her in such a dark very mentally deranged role i just really i think she's a 10 out of 10 in this if you she's haven't seen like, her before uh, she gives me um yeah that's that's another show that i'd say this is this is like the same sort of quality okay it's like the love child of say the sopranos and breaking bad with batman mixed in like just sprinkled just on a sprinkle top. of batman dark knight sprinkled on it no it's not even dark it's not even dark knight it's it's, it's it is the batman i i feel that this is this is the kind of show we need as batman yes this will be perfect ground roots fighting crime dark and gritty not like nolan's batman none of the other batmans before just a street level batman whether it's got drama it's he's 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 you know detective mode it's not all about fighting super villains he's just coming out and fighting crime and i think the the quicker that dc get over themselves and let us do this or let us see it magic would happen yeah. i think having this raw sensibility to the characters just seeing them raw and real and being at its core what they are i think that's it, the simplicity of it like you said i think is the beauty of what they're doing with this uh, version of dc we haven't seen before and like we were saying earlier in uh, in the episode is that it's even if you didn't see it as a DC show, it can be something completely different. You just forget entirely that it's to do with Batman. It's to do with DC. It's 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 so it's, unique. It is. Yeah. Again, very well done. Writing is writing is perfect. Don't change it. Please don't, don't change, change it. Like don't go four episodes in and then just completely fuck the story. DC. No. Matt, just keep it as it is because it's at the moment it's chef's geese. Yes. So Christine Miliotti, am I saying that right? Yeah, sounds right. Christine Miliotti, she plays Sophia Falcone. Again, she's the daughter of the crime boss that dies in the Batman, that gets also killed by Oz, sort of, kind of, indirectly. Yes. Um, 
and she's completely off the rails, insane. I think she's scarier than the penguin. I'm yeah, putting it out there. Yeah, because you don't. Uh, she just she just ends somebody in the first episode. She just she just shoots a thirteen year old kid. Doesn't even think about it. No. It's just like all right. Yeah. Got okay. no empathy. No, no. anything in she's her eyes. She's just true psycho. She's just psychotic, and it's great. So she plays the part brilliantly. She's so lovely in real life, and she's playing such a malicious character. I find that brilliant. Uh, Renzi Feliz, he plays Victor. So this is this is uh, Penguin second, or his driver, or his confidant. I don't know what you, really what you class him as yet. But I he's, love this character. He's great. I he's he's it. nervous. He's got a stutter. He's got a speech impediment. You can see that what um, Oz is trying to do, bring him out and make him strong, stronger as a person. Yeah, I mean, I am a little bit concerned about him. Because Oz is insane, obviously, and he has a weak disposition in some sense. Because he's just an average Joe yeah. who's come he's into this world, the yeah. And he's just like, "What is going on?" Literally pulled off the streets. Because in episode one, he yeah. was nicking Oz's rims off his very purple car. If you've not seen, the like, you got you got to watch the episode just for the very purple Maserati he's got. It looks like the Joker's detailed. It's golden purple. It's great. It's camp and wonderful. But he was uh, he was the voice of Chameleon in in Encanto. Uh, Enchanto? Encanto. Oh, he was in Encanto. Encanto. I never saw it, so I have got no idea. Encanto is a very lovely movie. I never knew that. That's really cool. So yeah, plays a good part. I'm a little bit concerned. I think he might end up in dire straits because Oz oh, sees everybody no, no, is no. expendable. No, I reckon he's gonna. I reckon he's gonna shock a few people. You won't mark my words. He I might come out. I mean, episode one, he does do the naughty on somebody. So yeah, might come out. Uh, Deidre O'Connell is uh, Francis Copter. So this is this is Oz's mum. Again, the character she plays it brilliantly. Oh. But she is she's got she's a narcissist with dementia, which I thought was a very interesting take. So you again, she's also pretty insane, not because of the dementia, just because she's insane anyway. <laughs> and uh, she runs their entire relationship runs on guilt. So okay. he he feels guilt for her condition, but also the fact that he's letting her down as a son because he's showing weakness. So he can't show weakness. He needs to be the best at everything. He needs to win, and he needs to do it for his mum. So there's a bit of a weird relationship there. I think that might, we might get some more information in the next couple of episodes about that. Some Obviously. acting acting chops for you in those scenes. They're definitely uh, yeah nomination worthy. Hundred percent. Clancy Brown, uh, Salvatore Mar- Maroni. I love Ken. Oh, these names, man. <laughs> Salvatore Maroni. I'm just gonna say it like Italian, and I can hands. say it. It's crazy. But yeah, he's he's a mob boss. You know, he's he's uh, very threatening. You can see uh, Oz is frightened of him every time he comes in. He, he puts on an act. Yes. He's always got this. Hey, yeah, you know, forget about it. He's a bit like that, but you can see that he's he's got that fear in him. But I think it's the fear and and the doubt which keeps him alive. I think it's all he cares about so is protecting his family. And if he feels that there's a, just a sm- smatter of you being disloyal, that's when you see his <laughs> character change. Yeah. That's it. You're dead. You're, you're out. You're out. That's it. Alberto Falcone. Unfortunately, he doesn't live that long in the show. Oops. Oops. Spoiler kind of, alert. <laughs> spoiler spoiler alert. alert. I mean, this is all spoilerific guys. This is all spoilers. We will he dies in the first somewhere. couple of minutes of the first episode. He does keep coming up in flashbacks and stuff, so you do see him every now and again. Um, in conjunction to the story. Miss Pat- I thought that was what he was in. I've seen because I uh, last time I saw he had much more floppier hair and. So what has he been in? The marvelous Miss Maisel. It's on. Um, oh, I know. Yeah. It's on Amazon. It looks completely different. So yeah, yeah. many of the characters and the he's actors. A, he's a good kid in this one. Um, but yeah, he, again. Good at playing an arsehole, and that's exactly what he is. He's he a drunk is arsehole. The, he is the brother to Christine's character, Sophia, yeah. just yeah. so you're ca- caught up. Yeah, again, another psycho. We've not met Carmen yet, or have we? Oh, no, Carmen's the blonde lady, isn't she? Carmen, Carmen, let me see. She's the one that uh, she's the one that runs all the uh, the prozies. Yes. Right. So she's blonde. She's blonde in the show. That's why it threw me off a little bit. She Again, uh, don't really know where she's coming from. She's very much out for herself. I think she is trying to look after her girls, though, which is pretty cool. Um, just strong female, yeah. doesn't take no shit. Yeah, you just can, you can. I think she knows that uh, Oz is trying because this is this is Oz's alibi. This is how he's got away with uh, killing um, Alberto. Alberto in the first episode. So he's the first thing he did was obviously after stopping kids from stealing his rims. <laughs> just go straight to her house and say, "Hey, you know, look, uh, just say I was here all night, and uh, and th- and that's it." 
cover my back. Yeah, uh, you, you're my, you know, you're my, uh, you're my alibi, and that was <laughs> it, and that was, and that's uh, that's how she was entered the story. And since then, she's obviously very concerned. She's found out through different sources that it was actually Alberto that Oz is off, and being the fact he was the head of the crime family at the time before he was off. Oh. You know, this is this is a big deal. But he keeps saying, "Hey, don't forget, forget about it. Don't have to worry about nothing." But then all of a sudden. Shit goes awry again, and then you're like, "Yeah, like Oz, man, you're a little bit too flippant with everything." I think you need to kind of just, <laughs> yeah, just you know, just ju- worry about stuff. Exactly. You can barely walk, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, Theo Rossi again. Uh, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of bang Anarchy. Bang on, bang on. He's very good at playing a snivelling prick, and I feel like yeah. uh, this is the kind of role he's going to play in this. Another snivelling prick. So if he's if he's Perfect casting. Looking out for himself type character. Doesn't care about anyone else around yeah, him. He's, he's, yeah, he's got no backbone. No. He's got no backbone. And he, and he pretends to be an ally and then ends up being a snake in the grass. I think that's the same deal here. I mean, again, he's a great actor. He's great at doing that role. So that's Completely go. juxtaposition from what he is in real life to the character like most of these he's actors. He's lovely in real life. Exactly. He's lovely, but he, he's, he's very good at playing He makes you uneasy. Johnny Vitti, again, a guy that's very good at playing a deadpan psycho. Uh, he's very good at playing a character with no empathy at all, looking out for himself. I think one of the best roles I've seen him in was probably House of Cards. Michael Kelly. Um, he was he was really, really good in that. He's in Man of Steel as well. I didn't, I didn't he's in so him. much. He's yeah, always so he's, just he's popping in. He's already got an in with DC because he's already been in another property. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But he he's one of those actors for me that's like, um, say, Bill Nye or some, some others that are just always in shows, in movies, and they just add that em- emphasis to the show. Yeah. He, you know it's going to be good if Michael Kelly's in there. And another thing as well, we've not seen Mark Strong yet because obviously he's dead. Oh, yeah. So he wasn't Mark, Mark Strong wasn't the uh, he wasn't the actor in the Batman. I'm Mark Strong, yet another amazing actor. He's been in so many movies. One that I think stands out for a lot of us that's not really talked about much is Stardust. If you want to see him in a oh, serious yeah, world, Stardust, yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, so if you want to see him in like that serious light, because I think that's going to be the type of character he's going to be sort of in the Penguin. I think the Stardusty character is going to be what he's going to bring to the performance. Because she's not on the list. I'm trying to find her on here. Oh, so Ray um, Agadazhalu. That's it. Um, who plays Nadia Maroney. Yeah. I can't really pronounce her name. Sorry if I butchered that there. Wonderful She's a lovely lady. Voice. I've met her in person and I tried to stop from saying her name because I couldn't pronounce it. I just want to say I think you're fantastic. We just love you. I love you in the expanse. You've got a fantastic... Um, she has such a presence as well and as... a voice, man. Oh. A voice. Can I have just... So an, good. I'm going to do the Little Mermaid on you and just take your voice because yeah. she has the most sultry, sexy, powerful she's done, voice. She's done a lot. She's actually in the in the uh, last season of Arcane as well, which is the League of Legends thing. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Very good. She played a very good part in that. I did not know that. Uh, she plays the cop in it. Again, the uh, but the show to watch her in is definitely The Expanse because she is a hard ass in that, but she's so good. I've yet to see this. She's so good. Like the her, uh, every time she's on screen, she just commands a commanding performance every time. Yeah. And you're scared shitless of her because you don't know what she's going to do next. Um, I don't know if she's going to have that sort of part in here. She's she's the wife of uh, Clancy Brown's character, so I think she's got she's definitely got stones because she's already uh, tried to fuck over Oz a couple of times. But I, again, we don't know where she's going to go with this character. I, I hope I'm going to get to see more of her on screen because she's great. So honourable mention is James Maddio. He's, I've known this guy since he was tiny, so like a kid. So I grew up with him because he was in Disney shows and everything. Uh, oh. In fact, he was in Hook. He was the young kid in Hook. Yeah. Epiphany. I I'd completely like one forgot. Of, one, of, one of the Lost Boys. Oh, now, you, awesome. once, now you look into his eyes, you're like, oh, yeah. You, you notice. You notice. It's, he's, it this guy changes. has been in so much stuff over the years. He's, he's just, it, and it was really random him popping up in this show. I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> then I had to think about it. It's like, hook. But he's been in loads of stuff over the years. Like, it, I've never seen him play a role like this. So, yeah, kind of cool, kind of awesome. Um, again, cast. 10 out of 10. Cast we is approve. Good. Cast is good. So a quick rundown again of the episode. Uh, starts off with uh, Oz trying to screw over both families. So again, he can he can get in the middle. He can play both sides. He wants to, them to both wipe each other out so he can then take over. Um, Sophia is the stick in the mud because she can see through Oz's bullshit. 
every time he's he doesn't she doesn't believe anything he says. Every time he opens his mouth, she's like very like mm, yeah, okay. very cat talk- and mouse. Yeah, you're talking bullshit. You're talking bullshit. I think he's he's very gradually starting to win around, or he's or she's pretending that he's starting to win around. This is what you've got to decide while you've got watching. to decide for yourself. Yeah, uh, obviously the the heist that he set up between the two families that's come completely awry. He nearly lost his life there, but he got out of it again. The guy's got uh, literally nine lives. He's the most immobile person you've ever seen in a, in a film or TV show because of his limp. But he was somehow able to get out of it without any problems. Just a little bit scuffled. Nobody asks any questions. Don't and underestimate. And he's got out scot free, yeah. Uh, he's now got dirt on uh, a member of the Falcone organization, quite high up in the, in the list Is as well. Johnny VT. Johnny VT, yeah. And he's, uh, he's trying to screw him over. Uh, again, doesn't succeed. That all goes awry. Every single plan he has doesn't end up how he wanted it to go, but for some somehow he always ends up on top or he gets away with it. And I think that's one of the best things about the show is that it makes him out to be human. He's not like a supervillain. He does make mistakes. He's uh, he's not perfect. And it, it comes across in the show, and I think that's really great. Um, the end of the end, of, it basically ends up with um, Sophia... And I was talking at the end, somebody she's trusted ends up being uh, the inside man, which was actually Oz, but he plants a knife on somebody else and he takes the fall for something that Oz did. He gets executed by Sophia's uh, uncle. Uh, So the uncle then says, you should fuck off to Italy and go and live there because we want you out of the way because you're becoming a nuisance because of all the, uh, the issues you're causing the family by... Basically, she's out for blood because she wants to find out who killed her brother. But she doesn't believe that it was the uh, Maloney. She thinks it was somebody else. So she's trying to figure out who he was. She's also trying to figure out who the inside man was because uh, she's very much a, a father's daughter. He wants, She wants revenge. She doesn't want the family to be seen as weak. But because her uncle's very weak, he's not, got, he's not what we call a very... Tough man, is he? No, he's very weak. Yeah, so she wants to take. She wants to show the family is strong. She doesn't want to show the family is having any weaknesses. But the uncle's very crap at doing that. So she wants to. Ba- she wants to take over the this family. This image basically. she wants of the family is that they're untouchable. Basically, no one is compared to the Falcones. They yeah. are the top tier of everyone in in the sti- in the city. Yeah. So, and that's this is what she's trying to prove. And uh, again, due to was is uh, getting involved, he ends up screwing that all up. She's now going to be sent to Italy, although I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think she's going to take that plane. She's going to let that happen somehow. So it looks like Oz and Sophia are now going to team up. And it's all down to the fact that her her main guy, her her main bodyguard that's been looking after her since she was a little girl... Castillo. is ...is now out of the picture because Oz framed him as the inside man. So again, really good episode. I've really loved episode one and two. Again, it does, it does drag every now and again, but... It, I think it's just to give you a break from everything. Cause there's so much information to take on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts, and I think it just gives you that time just to just to go. Okay, all right. Comprehend and then it up again. what's yeah. being put into place, and you can sort of like find your feet because exactly. there's so much things to take in. And I do believe you've got to really watch this closely because there's little Easter eggs here and there that sort of give away what may be the next steps in their plans. So I think that's sort of the. The whole uh, instance with Castillo, for example, you didn't know who it was going to be. Everybody was put in a room together. Watch it for yourself. Very on the edge of your seat, anticipating. You just don't know what's going to happen. And I love a show like that. You want to be left unaware of the circumstances of what that scene could play out. So check out episode three when it comes out next week. I hope you enjoyed our uh, review of episode two. We will be reviewing episode three. Try and say that when you're pissed. Definitely. (laughs) Um. Yeah, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you uh, soon on the weekly show or one of the shorts. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.